Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 5 Lesson 6, The Aztec, The Floating Gardens of Xochimilco. Our purpose for listening today is to be able to describe the plot of a legend. We want to explain the importance of farming to the Aztec and listen carefully to understand the word stationary. Can you say stationary? Let's take a look at our map. We live on the continent of North America. The Aztec and the Maya that we've learned about so far live in about the same area. The Maya lived on and around the Yucatan Peninsula. And the Aztec are a little north in central Mexico. Our last read aloud had us learning about a legend. That legend included an eagle and a snake. At the beginning of the legend, the Aztec people were searching for a new home. After considering a few places, they came upon an island where an eagle sat atop a cactus with a serpent in its talon. The priest explained that this is a sign from the gods that they had found their true home. Listen carefully to learn about farming today for the Aztec people. You're going to hear a new word, chinapas. Can you say chinapas? Chinapas are man-made islands that appear to be floating on the surface of water. These are also called floating gardens. Tenochtitlan is the capital city of the Aztec civilization, which is present-day Mexico City. The city's name, Tenochtitlan, means place of the cactus. Xochimilco is an Aztec village named for the many flowers and other crops that were grown there on Chinapas. Let's get ready to learn about farming. Paddling his canoe across the lake, the overpowering smell of blossoming flowers reached Torn Wing before he could even see them. The young man's name is Torn Wing. The Aztec, like the Maya, named themselves for plants, animals, or types of weather that had special meaning to them. Torn Wing was named for the wing of a bird. As he came closer, countless small islands or chinapas came into view. He could see why people referred to these islands as floating gardens. The Aztec made these islands then appeared to float on the surface of the water. But chinapas could not actually float away. Each island was firmly attached by roots that grew down into the bottom of the lake. As Torn Wing maneuvered his narrow, flat-bottomed canoe among the canals or waterways, he recalled his uncle's story about how the Chinapas were formed. The Aztec had dug ditches out of the swampy land for water to float through, then covered rafts with mud dredged or scooped up from the bottom of the lake. Over the years, layers upon layers of mud were added until finally, with the help of roots from the willow trees, the islands became stationary. Hundreds of narrow rectangular islands separated by a framework of the water ditches called canals covered the swamplands. For the people who had long sought a way to grow plants, even in times when there were no rainfall, these island gardens provided a wonderful solution. The surrounding water kept the earth moist all year long, irrigating and fertilizing the fields. Maize, beans, squash, tomatoes, and chili peppers grew in abundance supplying the large city of Tenochtitlan and beyond. The gardens of Xochimilco were truly an agricultural wonderland. Torn Wing's uncle, Wing Feather, had described Xochimilco to Torn Wing after the young man's father, who was Wing Feather's brother, had died. His uncle said, 
My brother was a good man and a good farmer. Did he teach you everything that he knew? Yes, uncle, Tornwing answered. I worked at his side in the field. We always had the best crop of any near our village. Good, said his uncle. I want you to know that even though your parents are gone now, you are not alone. Your aunt and I want you to come and live with us as our son. I can use your help in my business, and since we have no son of our own, when I grow too old to work, it will become yours. But nephew, I do not want to make you leave your familiar home. If you prefer to stay in your own village, I will help you by giving you cow cow beans. Cow cow beans were of value. The Aztec used the beans as a kind of money. But if you choose to live with us, the uncle said, you should know that the city of Tenochtitlan and its nearby floating gardens are a wonderful place to be. Tornwing replied, then I will come, uncle. Tornwing had easily followed his uncle's directions to Lake Xochimilco, but now that he was at last among the watery roads of the place, he had forgotten his uncle's warning. There are so many sights to see that it is easy to become overwhelmed and lose your way. Sure enough, Tornwing was lost. He decided to retrace his route to the edge of the floating gardens and start again. Just then, however, he heard an old woman's voice asking, Are you lost? Perhaps I can help. Turning, he saw a short gray-haired woman smiling warmly at him. She was sitting in a boat tied by a rope to the nearest Chinapa. If you are lost, you are not the first. When I was a girl and came here for the first time, it took weeks before I learned my way around. Tornwing smiled and said, you are very kind. As a matter of fact, I am lost. I was trying to find my uncle. His name is Wing Feather. Her smile grew even wider. I know him. He and my sons are friends. They can take you to him. She squinted closely at the young man. So you are Wing Feather's nephew. He told us you were coming. My name is Moonwish. She turned and called her sons. Starweb, Loud Song, come here. From around the far side of a high, thick cluster of plants came two of the biggest men Tornwing had ever seen. He thought to himself, these two certainly do not look anything like their tiny mother. The two young brothers grinned. It is good to meet you, the first one said. I am Starweb. I am the tall brother, he joked. This is my little brother, Loud Song. Actually, Loud Song was even bigger than Starweb, but he didn't seem to mind this introduction. He laughed and gave his older brother a friendly pat. Then Starweb added, Loud Song is especially glad to become friends of Wing Feather's relatives. Then the young brother, Loud Song, said, I will lead you to your uncle, sliding into a canoe so smoothly that it hardly rocked beneath him. Follow me, and he started off. Tornwing had just enough time to say goodbye to Moonwish and Starweb, paddling off quickly in order to keep his guide in sight. What a wonderful place, he thought. This is my new home. All the tiredness of his journey was forgotten in his excitement as he rode further into the heart of the floating gardens of Xochimilco. Hmm. From the story, why do you think farming was important to the Aztec? Why do you think farming was important to the Aztec? I hope you enjoyed the story. See you back here next time.